The National Council for Higher Education, NJE, was established by Act of Parliament 15 of 2011 with an aim of uh, accrediting and providing quality assurance for institutions of higher learning in the country. Now, since it's been operational for about three years now, it has quoted quite some controversy and some people have even questioned its mandate. Well, today I'm joined by Dr. Matilda Chitila Muntari, the outgoing Chief Executive Officer for the organization. Welcome. Thank you very much. So, three years. First, we'd like to know how it's been like from uh, around May 2014 up to now, uh, 2017. How have the three years been like at Inche? Thank you very much for having me. It's been busy, that's all I can say. It's I been can busy imagine. Because there's been a lot of work uh, to be done. Um, of course, you're right, we started in May 2014. And the, to get started, uh, of course, the parliament uh, realized that there's a gap, there's a need that needed to be, um, we need to pay attention to. So we, go, we got that mandate to try to implement the vision uh, of the government. And the vision was how to regulate um, all higher education institutions. So that's how they set up the National Council for Higher Education. So since then, it's been extremely busy. What are the major things that you've been doing? We've done a lot of things. Uh, to start with, you have to remember that uh, to get an organization going, because all it was was an act of parliament, mm -hmm. the mandate, the list of functions that we needed to perform. So to get an organization going, you need to do, put certain things in place. And then you look at your core business. What is it you're supposed to do in accordance to your uh, mandate? So for us at the council, the key highlights, as I would maybe call them, is the fact that we have, over these three years, been able to deliver on that mandate. Mm -hmm. We are now able to say Inche is functioning, mm -hmm. Inche is performing its uh, functions, and the, from that point of view, of course, as I say, you have to get, of all, first of all, get an organization up and running. So those are the side issues of systems and, the, uh, and, and what have you. But for the general public mm -hmm. is, are we able to function? Are we able to deliver on our, on our mandate? And that's what thing, one thing I can say that, yes, we have been. In simple terms, what exactly are you mandated to do? What are you supposed to do? Because I think institutions were there and they were operating well we thought normally until Nche came and then we were like what 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 are these supposed to be doing what exactly were you supposed to be doing okay good question because uh, you remember that all public institutions mm -hmm. they are also guided by their own respective mandates so if we look at uh, University of Malawi for example it's got its own mandate what they are supposed to do then we have Rana we have Mzuz University, then we have MAST, all of those, they have their own mandate given to them through the parliament. But you don't forget that you also have private institutions. Uh, maybe five, ten years ago, there were not as many as private institutions as we have now. But uh, to be able to manage all that, that's why I was saying that uh, the parliament felt that there was a need that there should be a, a body that can regulate all issues to do with higher education institutions. So our Act of Parliament has a whole range of functions. We need to register institutions of higher learning. We need to manage their quality. We need to, to support uh, the line minister, the Minister of Education, in terms of advising them what are the issues uh, of concern in the higher education institutions. So looking at item by item, there's a whole range of our, our functions. So you actually accredit both public and private uh, institutions, or it's just private? Correct. We uh, accredit both mm -hmm. public and private. Okay. Uh, in terms of registration, as I told you, that first of all, the public institutions, they are there through the Act of Parliament. Private institutions, they have to go through the process, applying for uh, registration through the Council, the National Council for Higher Education, we assess them accordingly. Do they meet the minimum standards? Those are some of the things that we've been working on the last uh, three years, developing a reference point uh, through the minimum standards so that we assess them based on that and then we recommend to the line ministry, the Minister of Education, that that institution should be given what we call a charter to be able to operate. Nche, Minister of Education, 
how do we interact? Where does your mandate end and where does the Minister of Education come in? The Minister of Education, as you'd expect, is the overall, uh, has the overall responsibility in terms of uh, education in the country, be it uh, primary and secondary school, as well as uh, higher education. So higher education is no exception at all. But we are there to support and implement their policies. Mm -hmm. All the policies are made at the, at the ministry, and that's where the, the key role comes in for the ministry. We are there to do uh, the implementation of all the policies that are advising the ministry and also performing. That's why our, our functions are very clear in terms of what we are supposed to be doing. Well, I'm looking at Nche's mandate here and it says you have to promote and coordinate education provided by higher education institutions. Correct. You design quality assurance systems and uh, you have to register, deregister and mm -hmm. accredit higher institution, education institutions. Uh, I issues of students grants mm -hmm. loans scholarship mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so many other things and i'm looking at i'm looking at you as uh, an institution i'm saying you must be the one who knows exactly what's happening with higher education in malawi mm -hmm. what would you say is the state of higher education in malawi what kind of state are our institutions in because you conducted a very important exercise um sometime last year we're mm -hmm. going to get to that mm -hmm. but just give me a general overview if somebody came and said, tell me about higher education in Malawi, what, what state are we in? Yeah. I think all in all, you know, in terms of uh, if we look at the snapshot of the, the state of higher education in Malawi, uh, we can talk about issues of access. Mm -hmm. It's still a problem. If you look at, uh, if you talk to money, for example, they'll tell you how many uh, do we have, how many Malawians are sitting uh, the Form 4 exams in this country. And then those who have done well, are they able to access uh, education post the school? And the answer is not, no, not everybody is able to do that because we don't have enough spaces. So in terms of status, that is one as aspect that we have to seriously consider and put on the table, that it is a problem. Yeah? Of course, the other problem, uh, if you speak to stakeholders, you speak to you know, stakeholders, in this case, we talk about employers, parents, mm -hmm. even students themselves. We talk about issues of quality, uh, that the output coming out of these high education institutions. That's why the regulation part of it comes in, that in J has to make sure that we look into these issues. We make sure that all our institutions in the country, they are able to have quality to provide quality education to all its students. Yeah. So the status is lack of access. The issues of quality are questionable. Not all institutions are able to perform at that high level. So that's the job of Inche, to isolate which institutions are not able to perform and which institutions are performing. That's why we do the assessments. And through those assessments of accreditation, we are able to reassure the general public to say institution A, is in this type of this situation. This is this is very depressing. It isn't. It isn't. I mean, it's part of what is supposed to be, because uh, you can't just leave things to be. Even when we talk about accreditation, you just don't do it once and mm -hmm. that's it. No, every what we call cycle. So every program has got its own timelines. Mm -hmm. If it's a four-year four-year program, that's the cycle for that particular program. So every four years, you have to look to say. Are you still performing at the level we expect you to perform? Yeah, no, but then my point was the state of uh, education, uh, of higher education in Malawi, it isn't where we, it should be, is it? I mean, access is a problem. Access is a problem. The institutions themselves are in a shambles, basically. I wouldn't say in shambles, per se. What I'm trying to say is that we need to manage the quality mm -hmm. uh, of what's happening in our higher education institutions. And I want to believe Malawi is not, maybe, it's not the only country. This happens in every country. That's why you have you need bodies like National Council for Higher Education, the line ministry is there to provide uh, policy uh, um, uh, issues. You make sure that the policies are available to be able to manage certain aspects of issues of access, issues of quality, and then we talk about issues of relevance. So, take for example, if we have graduates coming out of these institutions, are they employable? Mm -hmm. Are they fit to be employed? Mm -hmm. Meaning, do they have the right skills to be employed? Whatever they are learning from the uh, higher education institutions, is it relevant that this country, the industry in this country, are those skills needed? 
are we able to equip our students with the right skills uh, in terms of uh, employment? Is there one single thing that we can be happy about a lot <laughs> about our institutions of higher learning in Malawi? Yeah, but even when we talk about access, relevant, and quality, it's not all doom and group. I mean, there are positives there. And when we talk about quality, it's not all institutions. Which but are the pyramid not is very, it's very narrow. When you're, when you're graduating students from primary school through secondary school to tertiary institutions, mm -hmm. it's very, very narrow. It's only a small, I don't know what the percentage is. It should be a very small percentage, probably even less than 15%, who make it into our tertiary institutions, especially the public ones. Indeed, indeed, that's, that's very true. I mean, we are considered to be one of the lowest uh, in, in, in the world in terms of enrollment uh, to higher education institutions. But, uh, you, you know, these things are a matter of process, yeah. The moment that we have our government understand these things, they develop the right policies to support that we can be able to move from the position we are in now. We look forward another five, ten years. Mm -hmm. The right policies put in place, we implement those policies, you can see that things will bound to change. But these problems are not just for Malawi. You go uh, in other countries, even our neighboring countries, they will have their own problems. Problems of quality of uh, mm -hmm. education is not just Malawi, it's all over the place. Let's talk about accreditation. I think it's um, an interesting animal now. A lot of people <laughs> learned about this word uh, sometime in November last year. Um, accreditation, how many times do you have to accredit an institution? What's the cycle like? Mm -hmm. And then most importantly, do you visit the institution or the institution applies to be accredited, that does it apply for accreditation? Mm -hmm. Let's start with how regularly it's supposed to be done. Okay. In terms of how regularly it's supposed to be done, as I said, at every program cycle for program, because there are two aspects. Mm -hmm. There is accreditation for the institution, and then there is accreditation for programs. Okay. Yeah? So both of them have to be accredited. So if you are accrediting an institution, you're looking at the institution as a whole, and then you're also looking at the program itself, The offering. program itself, yeah. Okay. So for the program, this has to be every cycle. So different programs will have different cycles. Okay. Could be four years, could be five years, or could be seven years. Mm -hmm. So you'd go along with that. For the institution, you have to gauge uh, that is really a policy issue that INCHE has to set itself to say, do we appro um, do the accreditation for the institution every five years, for example. You may take a midway of some of the programs, the, the lowest period and the highest period. So you take maybe midway. So, so you, are, you accredit the okay. institution mm -hmm. every, whether it's every five years, you do that. For most countries, they do it five years. Some countries do it every seven years. So both of the institutions and programs have to be accredited, yeah? Now, the other... Who approaches who? Who approaches who, okay. So because INCHE was, um, in many ways, as a new institution coming in, you understand, mm -hmm. we spent some time trying to, first of all, to develop the system, what we call the system of assessing these institutions. So we develop the minimum standards, we develop the accreditation framework. In other words, you develop the tools that will support you to do the, the assessment. Yeah? Then you also develop uh, what we call a database mm -hmm. of what we call independent reviewers. Because the whole process, we have to remember, is a peer review process. Mm -hmm. yeah? In other words, you take the peers in that particular uh, industry. You say, okay. come and assess uh, uh, an institution which is similar based in terms of your understanding, your knowledge uh, to the level of the, uh, the, the people who are going to review the institution. Yeah? So you develop a database mm -hmm. of those reviewers. Then you inform, of course, the institution. It's not a surprise game. They have to be part of this process. It's not there to say, okay, today or tomorrow we are coming. So it's not like a surprise no, inspection that you not do? not at all. So you not notify the institutions? No. At such as a day you we're notify coming. the institution. In our case, we notified the institutions a year before they were assessed. You also ask them to do what they call a self-assessment report. So they look at their own, look at yourself in the mirror and mm. you talk about yourself. Okay. This is institution A, this is what we are, we have this number of programs, we have this number of students, we have this number of teachers, and, and so on. Okay. They submit that report to the council. And then you put a team of uh, what we call independent reviewers, as I say, it's, mm -hmm. it's a peer review process. 
Uh, you notify them when you're coming. Then you go and assess. And you look at various components of their institutions, the curricula, you look at the infrastructure, you look at various student services, all aspects. And all those things have been categorized, and they are aware that these things will be looked at when the reviewers come. So it's not a surprise game. So, November 2016, you did an assessment of some institutions of higher learning in Malawi, and five institutions were not accredited. That got dirty. Well, I don't think, uh, I think in many ways I would say it's to do with the understanding what this all means. Mm -hmm. yeah? Because we have, when you assess an institution, you accredit an institution or you accredit an institution on conditions. Yeah, in other words, you say mm, there are still some, some elements that you, you need to, to look into. Yeah? Okay. Or you simply say, yes, uh, we have had a look at you, but your gaps are too many. So maybe you need to address those gaps. So when you say that it raised a lot of um, attention in terms of uh, some of the institutions did not manage to get full accreditation, as you put it. First time you assess them, they didn't uh, reach the mark. But that doesn't mean that they are not good institutions. They have met the minimum standards. That's why they're able uh, to, to, to be allowed to, to function. Talking about minimum uh, standards, if, if, an, if an institution is to fail accreditation, for example, let's look, at, mm -hmm. let's look at an institution. What is it that they're not doing right? What have they failed? What are some of the things that you look at? Yeah, I don't really like to use the word fail. Okay. Uh, because the word fail has a different well, they level qualified. of connotation. They haven't achieved the minimum standards. Uh, they, have, they, have, they have failed. Well, they haven't achieved the minimum standard. Mm -hmm. That's why they are allowed to be operating. Okay. Yeah, because we have two levels. Okay. You have an institution which is registered, taking in students, and the students are learning. Mm -hmm. They're allowed. Mm -hmm. they, have meet, they have met the minimum standards. Okay. You come in to do uh, accreditation. You are looking at different aspects of academic excellence. So if they don't meet certain levels, you then give them a chance to say, look, we have identified this area, which is not quite there, and this other area, maybe you could try to address those things. Yeah, but I want you to give me an idea of what, what is it that we're talking about. Are we looking at infrastructure? Are we looking at what exactly are we looking at? As an institution, as an institution. I looking at the number of staff compared to the, I mean, the student uh, the teacher ratio. What exactly are we looking at? Well, I'll take, I'll take <coughs> an example. For example, you could go to an institution mm -hmm. and you may say that ah, but there is no division of responsibility here. Okay. You have a registrar who is also teaching, mm -hmm. yeah, a subject, yeah. So for us, that is an issue because there has to be good, clear division of responsibilities. So. That is one example that can allow an institution, well, may make an institution to say, maybe you need to address this. Recruit a member of staff who can be full-time on that particular subject. That's one example. The other example might be, maybe the, you have a larger proportion of your staff who are part-time. You don't have enough full-time members of staff. Because we know the impact of that on the quality of service, on the quality of teaching. So the assessment might say, no, you need to employ more members of full-time staff, yeah? Reduce the numbers of uh, part-time staff. Okay. So those are some of the examples. And you can see that. It doesn't mean that the registrar in teaching, they're not qualified. If they're, if they're not a good teacher. Yeah. They might be a qualified not, it teacher. Doesn't, it doesn't mean that. Okay. But we are saying that to have uh, a base service, to provide a base service to the student, we need to have these uh, responsibilities clearly uh, uh, marked. And, and if a program is not to be accredited, what, what is wrong with it? What, what could have gone wrong? Again, the, uh, the reviewers will look at the different uh, aspects. Mm -hmm. Whether the uh, mode or method of assessment is not best practice, because you have to understand that we have to compare all these things to other institutions elsewhere, not just here in Malawi. Of course, within the country, we also compare institution A, institution B. Because you could have both institutions providing the same course, you understand? Mm -hmm. You can go and get your degree from this institution. Another, your brother could go and get a degree from the other institution, but the same degree. We have to make sure that both of those institutions are using the same um, levels of quality. We also compare ourselves at the regional level. 
international level. So for a program, you have maybe things like that. Maybe the method of uh, assessment, maybe the, uh, the number of hours, what we call contact hours, teacher-student contact hours, the type of assessment method that they use. So they look at all those things and say, no, this is maybe, that's not good enough. The content of that curriculum may not be comparable to another, the same course okay. elsewhere. So it's lo looking at things like that. Back to November 2016, your institution said some, institu some uh, institutions of higher learning had not been accredited, and then a little while later there was a retraction to say, well, I think, uh, do, 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 would you like to explain what happened that around that time? I don't recall that uh, we said that the institutions were not accredited and mm -hmm. we turned around to say they were accredited. Mm -hmm. But uh, as I said, that uh, this uh, element of trying to understand the difference between accreditation or accredited with conditions, and usually the institutions will know what are those conditions. Mm -hmm. And some of the examples is what I've just given you. Mm -hmm. So we will specify to say if these areas are lacking or they are not to the best practice, can you attend to them? So we've given you accreditation, but it's on condition that you quickly address these, these issues. Some uh, institutions, we said uh, the gaps are maybe, maybe too big, so we give you a lot longer, let's say a year, uh, to implement uh, those, to address those gaps. And the, most of those institutions, they were asked to develop what we call an improvement plan. So in other words, we are saying there are a number of gaps, and for you to cover and address these gaps, develop a plan in what we call an improvement plan. How are you going to address this? For example, that what I was saying, that recruitment of staff, if there are too many part-time staff, uh, too few full-time staff, mm -hmm. then the institution will say, okay, yeah, we have a budget, we intend to recruit, uh, maybe by within the next six months or seven months, we'll have recruited. So they develop a plan how they intend to address those gaps. So I, I take it that the uh, institutions were quite cooperative when you, when, when you approached them and you told them that uh, some uh, their institutions had not been accredited or were accredited with, uh, with some uh, conditions. Because uh, I know that some alumni of these institutions were quite mortified to mm -hmm. know that their former institutions had not been accredited. Mm -hmm. What was the reaction or the response from the institutions themselves? I think it was mixed. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, it was mixed, yes. Uh, there were some quotas which says yes. Now we see Inche performing his function, okay. yeah, which was good to notice. And some even questioned if it should be your mandate to do that. Indeed, indeed. And then there were those who said, oh, hang on a minute, but I graduated from that institution. How come you're saying it's not accredited? And then we go back to that same point I was raising earlier. It's lack of understanding. Because when you say entails. institution A, mm -hmm has been accredited with condition, does not mean institution A is not good to be teaching students. Okay. No, they can continue teaching students because it's a registered institution. And also, if I graduated from that institution five years ago, doesn't mean my certificate that I obtained that particular time is not good enough, no. Because these things are cycles. They go according to the cycle. You go back in there after five years, you are trying to say, are you as good as you were five years ago? Okay. Are there some gaps which have come about over these five years? Now, if there's an institution in Malawi, and I want you to educate me here, that is not doing its job right. It needs to be closed down. Who's going to do that? Is it in chair? Is it the Minister of Education? Who's got the powers to do that? The, what, what happened, the process that we follow is that we register an institution. Okay. To start with, we have a stage what we call provisional registration. We give the provisional registration to an institution. Then we give them full registration. Mm -hmm. Then we write to the line minister, minister of education, to say uh, this is to do with private institutions. Yes. Uh, this institution is fit for purpose. It has, got, it has met the minimum standards. Please uh, issue it a charter. So we advise uh, the minister of education. The minister will issue that charter. Right. So, take for example what you've just stated there. You have an institution, that same institution, five years later you find that they are not good enough. Mm -hmm. They have gaps. They are not performing in the way that they did five years ago when you went to assess them. So the issue would be, say, you engage them. You say, okay, here are the gaps. Remember I was telling you that you give them at least a year to say, here are the gaps. Can you please uh, tell us how do you intend 
to address these gaps. So the institution will then suggest to the National Council for Higher Education, so well, this is what we intend to do, okay. these gaps. Okay, and then we say, okay, we'll come back. After a year or after nine months, you go back in there, assess again, and you find that the same gaps are still there. Are still there. Then you sort of, of course, you engage uh, the governing body of that particular institution. So whether it's a board or a council, you engage them to say, listen, uh, the institution are supposed to have done A, B, C, D. We came here a year ago. You haven't still done it. Then you give them a chance. You get a response from them. But should they continue doing that all the time, then we write to the Minister of Education to say institution A, B, C, D, we would recommend you withdraw their registration. So you, you are leaving, uh, which is a sad thing. But then let's say the good thing is that I'm the one taking over your job. What would you advise me? What are the things to look out for? What are you advising your successor to look out for? What I would say to my successor is that uh, there is a lot of goodwill uh, in the country okay. in terms of uh, trying to provide quality education in the country. Yeah? The mandate of INCHE has got good support from a lot of stakeholders, students, employers, the institutions themselves. All we need to do is implement and deliver on our mandate. The system that INCHE has started to, to build and establish, we should continue doing that, strengthening those systems, working closely with the institutions, but above all, using the authority of the, the mandate that we have. I think with that, and it's, you remember, it's just three years. Mm -hmm. Looking ahead, you have another three years, an additional five years. INCHE will not be at the position where it is now. Mm -hmm. It will be elsewhere, much stronger position. Yeah. So you're leaving. Where, where, where are you heading to? Do, do we have uh, an opportunity to know? An interesting question. <laughs> I think the first thing I need to have time off. Yeah, go and have a rest. It's reflect. been a hectic three years, I It's guess. been a hectic. It has been non-stop, I must tell you. So to go and have a little rest and uh, uh, be with family to start mm. with. Uh, yeah, but there's plenty to do. Okay. Plenty to do, yeah. Are you planning to uh, continue working in Malawi for some institution or something like that? Or we'll get to hear about that a little bit later. You hear about that a little bit later. Uh, I have my base in, in Scotland, so I shall be heading there at the earliest opportunity. But uh, my, uh, Malawi is always uh, a place for me to work. Yeah. Dr. Matilda Chitira Muntali, former Chief Executive Officer for National Council for Higher Education. It's been a pleasure to you. A pleasure to you. Thank you so much.